The financial crisis and the Great Recession have called into question America's standing in the global economy. The health of the U.S. economy and America's future depends on the knowledge and skills of the next generation. Yet America's education system has fallen behind other countries, particularly in Asia. America's college graduation rate has fallen to 16th in the world from first one generation ago. According to New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman, quote, if we had closed the racial achievement gap and black and Latino student performance had caught up with that of white students by 1998, GDP in 2008 would have been between 310 billion and 525 billion higher. If the gap between low-income students and the rest had been narrowed, GDP in 2008 would have been between 400 billion and 670 billion higher. My next guest is working to bridge the gap of educational inequality in America while also changing the model of philanthropy. Joining me now is Charles Best, founder and CEO of DonorsChoose.org, an online charity that helps students in need through school donations. Charles, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So what is your take on the state of education in America right now? Well, what we see are a lot of teachers, a lot of classrooms where um, students don't have the resources that they need to learn. There are kids um, going without the books that they need to develop a love of reading, going without the microscopes that bring science to life, going without a field trip that brings learning to life. And teachers are posting projects on our site to address these needs. So how is DonorsChoose.org working to improve public schools and education in America? Well, teachers at half of all the public schools in the country have posted project requests on our site over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And these projects request everything from a classroom library to art supplies needed for an art project to a microscope uh, for a science experiment. And then donors can choose the project that they want to support. And in fact, there are now over 5 million kids who've got books, art supplies, field trips, technology that they need to learn as a result of teachers posting projects and donors giving to those projects. So how many public schools or what percentage of the public school system in America how are you reaching right now? Well, it's, about, it's just over 50% of all the public schools in the country that have at least one teacher who has posted a project request on our site over the last few years. And it's probably uh, just under 5% of all the teachers in this country, the public school teachers in this country, who have posted the projects on our site. A lot of teachers have to pay out of their own pocket to give supplies to their students that schools can't afford. To what extent are you bridging the gap between the funding schools get from states or the federal government and what the schools or classrooms actually need to operate? How much have you closed the gap on that deficit? We certainly are not closing that full deficit or, or providing all the bridge needed. More than $100 million has been donated through our site over the last several years to classroom projects. Mm -hmm. uh, 230,000 teachers uh, have posted projects on our site, and, and so that $100 million was distributed across those teachers. Um, but we do not pretend that that is plugging the shortfall. In fact, we hope that donors who give to projects on our site have a really vivid encounter with some of the unmet needs in our public schools. And, and our hope is that they come away from that encounter energized to demand reform of the system and to demand change of their elected leaders. Let's talk about the business model of Donors Choose. You've essentially created a philanthropic marketplace, if you will. Your angle is education, but ostensibly other ch charities could parlay your model to their own uh, charities. Is this the new model for charity? A philanthropic marketplace is exactly the right word or phrase to use. That's exactly what it is. It's a place where entrepreneurial, innovative public school teachers post their best ideas for the resources their kids need and the projects that will excite them about learning and then where donors can of course choose which project they want to support. And there are, um, it, it's kind of a, a movement um, of, of sites out there right now um, everything from, from Kiva to Kickstarter, where 
uh, people can be uh, either a micro philanthropist or a patron or um, a kind of peer-to-peer -peer supporter of, of people in Ghana who need micro loans or of aspiring musicians in their hometown. There's really been a big movement behind this uh, social entrepreneurship. What, what do you think is behind that? Is it really the web? I think it's this, this kind of intersection of um, charitable impulses mm -hmm. and uh, business models that results in a lot of people who want to do good smart. And that's kind of the simplest definition for me of social entrepreneurship is it's a lot of people who, who don't want to just um, uh, you know, do good in the world. They want to do it in a smart way. So DonorsChoose.org has been on the fast track. You're a 12-year-old company, but you've grown at an annualized rate of 30%. And just to roll off some statistics here for viewers, 831,000 donors, 277,000 funded classroom projects, 230,000 teachers posting projects, 116 million cumulative donations in the last 12 years. You've supported 6.5 million students across the U.S. And as you mentioned earlier, you've touched the lives of 50% of public schools in America. So what's your strategy to grow the business from here and create greater awareness, ultimately translating to more donations? Word of mouth is really spreading within the teacher community. Uh, and to a great degree, we're just trying to keep up with the number of teachers posting projects on our site. Mm -hmm. It's donors where we focus uh, the bulk of our outreach resources. And we're, we're doing that through everything from um, uh, media coverage like this right now uh, to uh, calls marketing partnerships with big companies um, to, uh, to foundation grants that often enable uh, residents of particular communities to become education micro philanthropists and to spend donors choose.org gift cards on classroom projects of their choice. We're, we're trying to engage the public in public schools and um, our, uh, our only growth constraint is, is donor participation. How are you collaborating with corporations? There are uh, innumerable companies uh, across the country that use DonorsChoose.org to do well by doing good. And that often means engaging their customers or their employees in supporting classroom projects of their choice. So how are you leveraging social media in conjunction with your website uh, or your charitable marketplace, as it were, to engage the public in improving education in, in America, and as, as well as your venture? Well, we, of course, use uh, Facebook and, and Twitter to encourage teachers to share the projects that they've posted, to encourage donors to share the projects that they've supported. Um, we have a Facebook Connect integration where teachers can um, authorize uh, updates about their classroom projects uh, to be published into their stream. And uh, it was more than $2 million that we received in donations last school year alone just from click-throughs on Facebook status updates that, that teachers and donors were uh, publishing about their projects. How is the recession and post-recession America, the slow economic recovery, impacting DonorsChoose.org? When the recession began in 2008, we saw a big drop in average donation size, but thankfully we saw a big increase in the number of people who were supporting projects on our site. It was almost as if the recession made more people want to be philanthropic. It's just that they uh, could afford, they couldn't afford quite as much uh, as they could before. All right, if you'd like to give to schools in need, please do visit donorschoose.org. Charles Best, you're doing such wonderful things. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Best of luck to you. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate it.